Well, welcome to our holiday Backs the Blue event. Those of you that are wondering what it's all about, January 17th is an important day in the, in the history of our city. Just five years ago, uh, Officer Doug Barney was shot and killed just 300 yards north of City Hall. And we have made a commitment to make sure that day does not pass without us memorializing that event and honoring Doug's service and sacrifice on behalf of the community. So this year with COVID, um, we can't do the event in person as we have enjoyed over the past four years. So I know there's some individuals that are gonna share some, some memories they have of Doug. And I think we all have in our lives things that have happened over the course of our lifetime that are kind of steered in our memory. And for me, that was one of those days. I happened to be in Colorado Springs visiting my son when Sheriff Winder called that early morning uh, to inform me that we had had an officer down and, and subsequently uh, Doug had passed. I hope that as time passes that we will never forget the important day in the history of holiday. And I know for me, I will never forget that day. My favorite thing that I remember is how he would always greet everybody. What up, my brother? That's that's That was Doug's, uh, that was his saying and that was how he greeted people. He would always talk military stories with me. He always had a good attitude. And no matter with what he was dealing with, he just seemed to always have a good positive attitude. He always had a smile. I mean, he was always outgoing and he would always greet me like with, hey brother, you know, and, and that was like with everybody. Um, he was just so friendly. I had just started working up here at Holiday. One of the very first people that I met, he actually sat in my office with me. Anything that I didn't know, he was right there to help me with. He laughed a lot and he'd tell me silly jokes that, that I didn't always get. <laughs> we shared an office together and he sat, you know, right next to me. And, and even coming back from a, you know, a, a long medical related illness, optimism, happiness, laughter every single day. When Doug came through those, those doors over there, there was, some loud comment and it was jovial it was going to be happy and and uh so many of the mornings would start with a phone call from doug and hey doug what's what's going on he's like hey buddy i'm just in the mickey d's drive through uh how many sandwiches you want me to pick you up oh i'm i'm, I'm good and he'd show up five minutes later with two sandwiches even though you de politely declined and he'd he'd throw them he'd throw them on the uh on on your desk and and uh, he was just, it was just that day in and day out. About six years ago, during the time I was a detective in the holiday precinct, I had the opportunity to work right next to Doug. We were in the same office, uh, just a cubicle apart. And I had never met him before then. And I got to know him very well. He had had a very rough, rough go in life at that time. And it was interesting to me because he was still the most positive, optimistic person that we had in the office. Despite all of the trials that he had gone through, he was the one who had the biggest smile out of everybody in the office. And that really, uh, th th that touched me. It, and it helped me reflect more on how I need to do. I need to be more like Doug. For me, the most important thing I remember is when I was first hired with Unified and I was down at the uh, work care, just getting all of my physical stuff done, hadn't met anybody. He happened to be sitting in the lobby doing something to come back to work. And I introduced myself, said, I'm gonna start working with you, PD, and he's in his uniform and, and whatnot. And he says, look, man, as, as long as you do your job correctly with kindness and show every person that you're dealing with respect, they'll give it back to you. And you'll have a long career full of a lot of, you know, good things that you can talk about. And that's how I think Doug lived his whole life, everywhere he went, on duty, off duty. He was a genuinely good, friendly guy. And I knew Doug when he very first started with the Sheriff's Department uh, many years ago. We worked together for a few years at the beginning of our careers. And then, uh, you know, kind of over the years went our separate ways a bit. When I first got transferred to Holiday City, I knew Doug was working here and that was one of my biggest things I was like I get to work with Doug again this is going to be awesome and it just was so sad that uh, it was that first week um, that I came to work here um, that he was killed and I never even saw him once so that was really hard. I'm Lex Bell uh, I was a police officer for 21 years I started in the year 2000 January of 2000 
and I just retired, worked in Holiday and Mill Creek as a sergeant for a number of years, enjoyed it up here. A lot of my memories of Doug revolve around cars. Doug was really big into race cars growing up. He drove race cars, drove fast cars, uh, worked on them with his dad. And, and if my memory serves me correctly, he, I think he said his friend owned an auto shop and he would go there and just work for free because it was fun. It was a hobby of his and he loved it. I remember our chief at that time, whenever he had uh, an issue with his car, he'd call up Doug and Doug knew exactly what to do. Uh, he even referenced different YouTube videos that he would find out, oh, this is how you attach this certain specific piece to this certain specific model of a car. And he would always brag. He said, you can find anything on YouTube. He did it for the benefit of helping others. And, and that was what was really special about that. As we were working, we would uh, take turns playing a song, you know, over you know, the radio or a Bluetooth speaker. And I'd play one and then Doug would play one. and. And I mentioned that I played guitar and still played the guitar. And in high school, I played drums, but I, you know, you get married and you go to an apartment, drums kind of, they kind of had to go bye-bye. The very next day he shows up in his private car, just a small little Saturn, and it is stuffed to the gills with a drum kit. Like, what's this, Doug? And he goes, hey buddy, these have, I got these for my son and they've just been taking up space in, in the garage and, and uh, they're yours. And I'm like, Doug, no, I can't, I can't just take drums. If they're not being used, take them, they're yours. And in my office at, at Mill Creek, I have the snare drum and a picture of Doug above it. And that's kind of my, my remember area. I was deploying the next day after he was killed. That was very difficult um, for me and a couple of uh, fellow officers from Unified that we all deployed out. And how we could try to mourn for our fellow officer while we were ready to head out and uh, one of the things that we were able to do together, which was really nice, we were able to get a flag flown for the Doug Barney family to help honor him. And that was our way of being able to mourn. It's really hard to believe that it's been five years since since Doug uh, was killed tragically here in Holiday. Uh, Doug was just such a great person. Uh, he was somebody that, you know, I had had the opportunity to, to know and, and work around uh, most of my career. Uh, and, uh, you know, although we never worked directly side by side in, in a specific area, I had the opportunity to work around him here because we both worked for the same department for, for most of my career. And, and he was just one that every time you saw him, I mean, he was just somebody that was so full of life, always so friendly. Uh, you, you just knew that when Doug was there, you know, he was always happy and always made you want to just be that better person uh, because of the way he was. He just uh, such, such a great person. I, I just can't say that enough. Um, I, I truly miss Doug, as do many people in this department. Um, it's, it was really such a sad day uh, when he was taken from us, uh, you know, five years ago. And uh, But he's somebody that we'll never forget. I, I can't even count how many times he said amazing things about his wife and his kids. And it was just another lesson I learned from Doug. In the midst of all of the trials he was going through, all he had to say was things of, of a positive nature that showed how amazing everyone was in his life. When you were with Doug, he would always talk great about you. You felt like you were gold when you were talking with Doug because he would always, he'd always refer to you as if you were the, the coolest person that he had met that day. But he talked about his families if each member had just hit a home run in the championship game, but it was every day. And it wasn't always super specific on what they were doing. It was just, you could tell he lived for his, his, his family. You know, I miss him. It's been five years now. It, uh, in one way, it feels like it's been no time at all. And in other ways, it feels like it's been forever since I've seen my brother, Doug, you know? Um, think about his family a lot. I still talk to them. If they need help, I'm there, you know, and I, and I have been, and, and I wish I were more, but, uh, and I hope Doug knows that, you know, that we're all still here for him. It's not, it's not ever going to be any different. We're always going to be around, uh, you know, his kids need something, Erica needs anything. We're there. Thinking about what I could share with you, I remembered that after after Doug passed, one of the elementary schools in Holiday asked the students to write letters to me. 
and reading through them, they were really sweet condolences. There were a couple kids that had a story to tell me about Doug, which I think I'll always remember, but they told me that there was a call where he had come to their house. So someone had tried to break into their home at night when they were all home and a couple of the officers responded and while one of the officers was out talking to their parent, um, Doug stayed inside the house to play with the kids and watch them and talk to them. And they told him that they felt really scared and he promised that he would come by their house and check on them. And they said that for the next couple of weeks around the time they were getting ready for bed, that they'd look outside their window and see his car parked in front of their house for a few minutes every night. And they told me how much that meant to them, that they knew that someone was thinking about them and looking out for them. Oh, it's been so nice to feel remembered by the city and by the chief of police and all those that, that reach out and continue to reach out so many years later. It's really sweet to feel like uh, his sacrifice matters to them and is something that will be remembered for a long time. This is in honor and memory of Officer Doug Barney, our brother. May we never forget, and especially for you, Doug, Semper Fi. Doug, we'll never forget you. Never forget. We'll always feel him and we'll always remember his love for everybody. Never forget. I love you, brother. Never forget our heroes. Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. Today we are remembering Officer Doug Barney, who worked for Unified Police Department. He was killed in the line of duty January 17th of 2016. Mm. Doug was a wonderful officer who really cared about his community. He also was a family man. The entire department knew who Doug's kids were, Maddie, Mary, and Jack. The impact of Doug's death was huge, and it still is, to the Unified Police Department and the communities that Doug has worked. Doug worked for the Salt Lake County Sheriff's Office, for Taylorsville Police Department, and for the Unified Police Department. In his last assignment, he was assigned to Holiday City. We want to make sure that our community knows that Doug was dedicated to his job. He was a wonderful family man. All of the officers that worked with Doug knew Doug's kids because Doug was so uh, proud of his children. We want them to know that we still care about them. They are our family and we always remember Doug. Many times when we are at work, uh, we can hear Doug's voice because it was very, very loud. Doug referred to uh, his law enforcement family as brother and sister. Many times if you were somebody of rank, he would refer to you as Sarge rather than a sergeant. He was very happy all the time. There was a time that Doug was battling cancer. And during that time, Doug was put on a restricted duty. He had to take phone calls, but he wanted to go back to the road so bad because he truly, truly cared about his community and he missed that. I hope the community understands the dedication that Doug had to his community to go through such a tragedy of being diagnosed with cancer and then still coming to work, working very, very hard, and then tragically killed in the line of duty. When an officer is killed in the line of duty, it's a huge impact to that department. Unified Police Department has suffered a huge loss. Our officers dedicate their lives to the communities to protect and serve. And when an officer is killed in the line of duty, the impact is huge, not only to the department, but to the families. And everyone in our community suffers. So I want to thank our officers for their sacrifices that they give every day when they come to work, when they put the badge on, and they go to work and serve our communities. I just want to thank them for their service today. 
Shortly after Doug's death, I had a community member from Holiday City come to me and say how much they really cared about Doug. She had met Doug at the convenience store where she worked, and every morning Doug, before shift, would stop at the convenience store, walk in, uh, talk to everybody in the store, and always, you know, made them laugh, had a joke of the day for them, and she said that, uh, you know, they're going to really miss Doug. Uh, his presence was huge, uh, even just in a, con a convenience store, his presence was huge. Well, that's how Doug was even when he walked into a briefing room. Uh, his presence, you could hear his loud voice, his laughter all the time. Uh, and our community recognized that. And, you know, I thank our community for never forgetting Doug.